in my opinion, I play good in the game and I miss, I scored a goal and I missed the penalty. I feel well, the the best day, the bad day of my life, the worst day. The of worst my life. day of your life. Oh my God. Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, Roberto Baggio, Marcus Rashford. What do these players all have in common? They've missed penalties in finals. Leo in Copa America 2016, Cristiano eight years earlier in 2008 in the UCL final with Manchester United, Roberto Baggio 14 years before that in the World Cup final, and of course Marcus Rashford in this past year's Euro Cup final. A lot of great players have missed them in crucial moments. So this week, on Justin's case, we're gonna tell you how to avoid these mistakes and how to take the perfect penalty. Okay, so today we are looking at what makes the perfect penalty. So that whenever you get yourself into a situation where your team is counting on you, the fan base is counting on you, maybe an entire country is counting on you. You can just bury that ball and turn and celebrate. Jump into the fans, do whatever you do, kiss your pinky ring, whatever you like. But here's the thing. Well, there are a lottery if you don't have the information. Knowledge is power. Around 80% of penalties are scored in regular play, according to Dr. Ken Bray, a researcher who has studied penalties at the University of Bath. That number slightly drops and penalty shootouts to around 75%. That's mostly down to the fact that there are multiple shooters, which gives the goalkeeper more chances to warm up, to guess get in the rhythm, as well as the fact that further down the roster you go, the less talented your penalty shooters might tend to be. We can measure shot quality and save difficulty. Shot quality is bringing together physics, geometry, the speed of the shot, and logic. And so because you have a stable situation, it's very easy to measure shot quality. We take the solid angle there of the shot, the speed of the shot, and this is all done with uh, camera technology that's available today. And then we can analyze also the save difficulty factor for the goaler based on the speed, the location, and, and so on. Now first off, what a lot of coaches do is they go around and ask who wants to take a penalty and who doesn't. You know, they're leaning on that issue of confidence. But coaches should generally know who their best takers are. They should give them the order in advance because they have all the percentages of their penalties. So that when the time comes, the shooters are ready, mentally and physically and everything else. But for the player, here's what you should do. When I'm helping athletes that are maybe worried or are nervous or just feel like they just can't perform as well as they know they can when they're training, I'd always break it up into what are you doing when you're practicing, when you're training? What does your preparation look like before the penalty shootout? And then what are you doing during the penalty shootout? Step one, pick your spot. Go out in a park and shoot a hundred times on a friend. It's likely you'll score a good amount of time, unless your friend is Gigi Donnarumma. But by placing your shots in these zones, you're 80% likely to score. Inside the zone, the percentage drops to a bit over 50%. So here, we suggest practicing a play shot with good power and repeat, repeat, repeat. We know that practice is key for that, to even being the running. Uh, there's some sort of familiarity with practice as well, so making sure that that's a familiar action that you're going through, making sure that if you're going to take that kind of short stride, run up to the ball, then that's practiced. If it's the hop and the skip, then that's practiced as well. Number two, when you're in a penalty shootout, stick with your spot. Here's the thing, shooting a penalty in normal circumstances is one thing, doing it with the pressure of winning or losing a match is completely different. The levels of stress can mess with your head. But if you shot a certain kind of shot enough times, you'll start to develop muscle memory. So that even if you are feeling stressed, you can be confident in your technique and ability to place the shot. Now some players go up unsure where they want to shoot, and that doubt can be bad. Frank Lampard did that in 2006, Frank Lampard did that in 2010. Some pros, like Jorginho, will change up what they do each time. They wait for the goalkeeper to move before shooting. Now this can work, and if you have the time to practice pens all the time, give it a go and just see what works for you. Always pick what works best for you. Now step three, be prepared mentally. You can still practice under pressure, even though you might not have 
all of the people there. So putting something on the line is really important. So if it's just players doing extras after training, for example, I always encourage them to have something going, maybe a wager, maybe that if I lose, I have to buy you this, or there's just something on the line, something that you can lose, just like you would if it's a real penalty shootout. Beyond the technical side, you have to be ready psychologically. Make sure to take some deep breaths and use mental imaging. Picture yourself scoring the perfect penalty, the one you scored 100 times in training or at the park with your buds. If the coach has prepped you in advance, like they should, all you have to worry about is burying your shot. Now, there may be one more variable for certain players. Let's say that you play at a high level or a level where the goalkeeper can have studied you. Maybe you've already taken a penalty in this match, or maybe you play for a team where there's video footage available so the goalkeeper can get that video of your penalties and find out some other info. The thing is, if you place your shot well enough and with enough power, many penalties will honestly be unstoppable. Of course, you could also practice a secondary shot. That's something that Zinedine Zidane did in the 2006 World Cup Final, the little Penenka. And that's all you need to know. Now go out there and take the perfect penalty. Okay, now you are just in time. Traditionally, I think players have seen penalty shootouts as a situation where you can lose something. It's trying to protect yourself and the team from losing in that situation. Whereas over time, if you can start to work on a penalty shootout being an opportunity to gain something, then immediately there's a more positive link there. And we tend to call this loss aversion. So we know that the pain of defeat can weigh really heavy in people's minds. Whereas if you compare that to a chance or a challenge to rise to or an opportunity to gain something, then it makes practicing these things and actually being willing to take a penalty shootout less of a nervous situation and more of something to gain and something to be excited by. Actually, y'all, I don't have much to say this week. I've given you what the experts say. If I have a case, it'll be just do that. Easy, right? But also learn how to do panenkas because they are the most fun and excited penalty as well as the hardest to pull off. So there's my case, go practice panenkas. But instead of going very deep into my case this week, I'll just share a couple of comments from other videos. Oh, you mean this glove? Wow, Steven, does yours float smoothly or does it mess up all over the place like this one? Give me your secrets if you have them so I can harness the powers of the globe. Okay, here's one more comment. Well, yeah, that hasn't happened yet. Plus, I mean, if you guys have watched any of our other shows or programs, you may know that we do have the French Mosala at our offices already. Yes, to work at Oh My Goal, you have to have a doppelganger of a professional footballer. Helps if you have two or three like me. All right, so that's all the time we have for this week. But before I go, I wanna hear what everyone thinks about today's episode. Are you a penalty taker for your team? What's your preferred penalty? Do you have a process, a side you choose? What works for you and what doesn't? Let us know in the comments as always. And of course, if you say something that is particularly funny and not mean, we may share your comments in the future. Anyways, that's all we've got for Justin's case this week. Tune in next week for the next episode of Justin's case. And take care, everybody.